Write down the letter that represents an alcohol. Let's take a look. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We're looking for an alcohol. A clearly is not. B is not because that is an aloalkane. And then C looks like an aldehyde. But take a look at D. D looks like an alcohol. So let's investigate. In D, we have C4H10O. Uh, if we write that in terms of the general formula, we would have CNH2N. H2N plus 1OH. Makes sense. So 2.1.1 is D, that is alcohol. And then 2.1.2, two compounds that are functional isomers of one another. So functional isomer of one another, either aldehyde and ketone, or esters and carboxylic acids. So let's take a look. But they need to have the same molecular formula, that is. Uh, so G is an alkene, B halalkene, D obviously that is an alcohol, and then F is an alkene, E is an alkene as well. So are we only left with A and C? I think we are. So let's take a look at A and C. One, two, three, four, five. So that is C5, and then it is a ketone. And then let's take a look at C. One, two, three, four, five. So C, as it ends, we have a carbon with two hydrogens, a carbon double bond oxygen, hydrogen. So the answer, therefore, is A, C. 2.1.2, uh, we have two compounds that are functional isomers. 2.1.3, two compounds that belong to the same homologous series so we want the same homologous series so e we've said that e is an alkane right so e is an alkane f is pentane so same homologous series they are both alkenes so e and f they belong to the same homologous series and then question 2 2.2.1 are you pick name of compound a so obviously sticking to the basics we need the longest carbon chain so that seems like it let's check one two three four carbons and then if we go straight we have one two three four carbons so that is the longest carbon chain so we have one two three four five so we have pen 10 uh, pen 10 and then we have to start numbering our carbons from the side closest to the functional group so one two when we start from the bottom we have one two three so we have to start uh, numbering from the left and side of which uh, the double bond oxygen will be on the second carbon so we have pen 10 2 o and e right and then we have a branch on the third carbon so that will be three dash methyl pen 10 2 on so one two three Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. That is actually beard. What am I doing? What am I doing? One, two, three, four. Okay, and then when you got straight, you have beard as well. So almost got this wrong. So butane two on. One, two, three, four. And then the functional group is on the second carbon and the branch is on the third. Okay, I think we're fine now. Two point three point one. Um no, 2.2.1. What about 2.2.2? Are you pick name of compound B? So we have a halal cane. So let's find the longest carbon chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If we go up, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the longest carbon chain is 7 there. Because if we go up here, it would still be 7. Um, so let me see if I can highlight it. Uh, this is our longest carbon chain. Just to verify, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, five, six, seven. Okay, so pent is, oh, not pent, but seven. Seven is hept, so we have heptane because it is a halo alkane. So we need to actually number our carbons from the side. That makes the most sense. So, oh, not really. Let's just start numbering from the left and start numbering from the right and see which option gives us the smallest number because that's what we are looking for ultimately. 
so on the second carbon here um so this would be a branch on the fifth carbon uh but we between methyl and chloro we have to start with chloro right so we see two dash chloro dash two comma five di methyl heptane so let me verify two chloro it is there two point one two three four five two point five dimethyl heptane that seems fine uh if we start numbering from the other side what are we gonna have uh we would have five chloro right and then we would have one two three would have three and five methyl um yeah so that does not work we have to start numbering from the left uh, that is our better option so that is the answer to you 2.2.2 .2 .2. uh are you picking name of compound g so we need the longest carbon chain once more mm, so let's take a look one two three if we go down four five six um let's check one two three four five six the other side one two three four five six one two three four five um i think i may be with that i think i may be with that uh but we have to include the functional group though are we including the functional group in this path uh, okay let me take this route of which i'm gonna have one two three four five six that would be six carbons uh seems to work we i mean we have to start numbering closer to the functional group here we don't have a choice so six would be eggs and then the double bond is on the second carbon so eggs two in uh one two three four five six one two so yeah the double bond is on the second carbon and then the branch where's the branch the branch is on the second carbon so we have two dash or methyl no we cannot start with that we have to start with the one on the third carbon because it is ethyl so we have three dash ethyl dash two dash methyl uh, because alphabetical order is important when we actually uh, organize the branches alphabetical order is important so let's just verify that we have done the the correct thing so how many carbons one two three four five six eggs uh, double bond on the second carbon we have a branch on the second carbon which is methyl and then on the third carbon we have ethyl ah uh, maybe with that and then let's check that first one uh 2.2.2 .2 just to make sure that everything is clear uh we we're looking for the name of compound b so that is one two three four five six seven obtain uh branch on the second carbon and one is chloro the other one is methyl but then we have another methyl on the fifth carbon ah looks good looks good i think we are looking for the oh okay we've named g now um we named a we named b and g okay so 2.2.4 structural formula of two straight chain oppositional isomers of compound d uh compound d so compound d one two three four uh we have oh we've already deduced that that is an alcohol right um so positional isomer same molecular formula different position of the functional group so the functional group is on the first carbon and then the other option therefore uh we should just um change the position of the functional group so from the third carbon oh so from the first uh let's say to the second carbon um okay there we go that would be the two structures of the functional of the positional isomers 2.3 uh compound e c3h8 reacts with oxygen according to the balance equation uh, a combustion reaction 
initially 8 cm cube of compound E and 50 cm cube of oxygen were injected into a container of adjustable volume and allowed to react. Rather than the name, the name for this type of reaction, it is a combustion reaction. 2.3.2 calculate the total volume of the gases present in the vo in the container at the end of the reaction. Um, so we need to figure out which one is the limiting and then we're going to use the limiting to calculate the volume of CO2 and the volume of HO2. So how are we going to do that? Uh, so we have compound E and O2, right? Compound E and O2. So we're going to find the number of moles of the two. So let me check on my cushion paper. Uh, what Vm is given as molar gas volume. Um, that is 22.4 uh, decimeter cube, right? Yeah. So I'm going to have 8 times 10 to the minus 3. Times 10 to the minus 3 is the same thing as dividing by 1000. And then divided by 22.4. Oh, I must write the formula first, by the way. V is equal to Vm, right? So that I can get a mark for the formula. 8 times 10 minus 3 divided by 22.4. Um, I want to write this in scientific because there's a lot of decimals. So this is 3.5714 times 10 to the minus 4. On the other side, we have 50 over 22.4. That is 50 times 10 to the minus 3, by the way. So 50 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 22.4. Uh, this is... 2.2321 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So in order to find which one is in excess, we need to divide these two numbers by their balancing coefficients. Uh, we know that it is 1 is to 5, right? Uh, the balancing coefficient of E is 1, that of O2 is 5. So when we divide 3.5914 by 1, it's still 3.5914 times 10 to the minus 4. Is it? 59057. I'm going to have to check that again if I am to use it in other calculations. So I divide the answer that side by 5s. It is the balancing coefficient. I get 4.4643 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. So this is the limiting because it is less than that of O2 when we divide them by their balancing coefficients. Don't be surprised by this method. Um, if you use the basic method that we use to find uh, the, the the limiting reactant, it is completely fine. Yeah, I just, some kids just showed me this method and it works. Yeah, but if you stick to the basics, uh, don't worry, you'll be perfectly fine. So this is what I'm going to use to calculate, um, to calculate, what do we call this? to calculate the volume of the CO2 and H2O produced. Right, so volume to volume, uh, not volume to volume, but gas to gas, we can use the mole ratio, but to use gas instead because they are all gases. We don't have to go to number of moles first and then calculate the volume. We can just use volume uh, embedded in mole ratio. <laughs> okay, so let's do that. Uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 3 over... 22.4. I'm just verifying whether this is 57 or 59. It is 57. So now uh, the volume of E is to the volume of CO2, that is 1 is to 3. So here we have 3.5714 times 10 to the minus 4. So here we are going to have what? So I just need to multiply that by 3. 1.0714 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, decimeter. Oh, okay, no, I'm contradicting myself. I, I've used the number of moles here. I can just use the volume instead of the number of moles. Yeah, that's what I was proposing up there. Because if I calculate the number of moles, I'm going to have to then multiply it again by the volume, which I don't want to do. So I can use 8 times Oh, 8 centimeter to the 3, 8 centimeter cube. I can use 8 centimeter cube here, actually. So it will be just 8 times 3, uh, which is 24 centimeter cube. So that is the volume of CO2. 
and then the volume of E is to the volume of H2O 8 times 10, not 8 times 10 because I'm using centimeter as it is. 8 centimeter Q is to, I'm skipping steps, why? 1 is to 4, the balancing coefficient first, and then this is 8 centimeter cube. And then now we just have 8 multiplied by 4, which is 32 centimeter cube. So VT, the total volume, is 24 plus 32, uh, which is equal to 56 centimeter cube, uh, which is equal to 56 times 10 to the minus 3 decimeter cube. That is 2.3.2.